Okay, so this is Dart Web Components Code Lab. Who here knows about Dart? Okay, wait, higher. Like, I can't quite tell the percentage. Okay, so who here knows about Code uh, Web Lab? I'm oh, sorry, Web Components. There, Eric. Everyone has to go see Eric Beidelman's talk later. He's the one guy who rose, raised his hand, so obviously we should listen to him. Okay, and who here knows what a code lab is? I mean, everyone should raise their hands. Okay, so I put a lot of effort into this uh, code lab, and so basically my goal is to shut up as quickly as possible and to uh, like, let you get, guys get started. But basically, if you go along with this code lab, by, you know, within like two to three hours, you should have a decent grasp of Dart and you should have a decent grasp of how to build web applications using Dart with web components. And that's very exciting because this is a brand new code lab. I've, you know, lost lots of sleep putting it together. And um, so you guys are the first ones to try it out. Hopefully there aren't major bugs. Okay, so if you wanna talk to me, I'm uh, G plus dot two, uh, slash Ginex, that thing on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, now, I think that there are some of you that might get stuck, and I'm trying to figure out the best approach to answer questions, especially since, you know, you guys are going to be coding not inside this room, but elsewhere. And I think that the best approach is if you post to Stack Overflow and you use the Dart tag. And I'm going to be watching Stack Overflow pretty closely. Some of my coworkers are going to be watching it. That's probably the most effective way. So if you get stuck during the code lab, use Stack Overflow. I promise I'm not just getting rid of you. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a quick introduction to Dart. I'm gonna try to do that in 10 minutes. A quick introduction to web components. I'm gonna do that in like two minutes and Seth is gonna do the talk later on today. And then we're gonna start hacking, which means that you know you can start uh, downloading Dart editors, make sure you could get the code lab, make sure you could get the source code, get all of those things taken care of now so that no one gets stuck. Okay, so here's an introduction to Dart. Dart helps developers from all platforms build <laughs> complex, high-performance client apps for the modern web. Uh, it comes with batteries included, so it's not just a language, but it's also a set of libraries. Um, it's a virtual machine. There's a Dart editor, um, which is kind of IDE-ish. Uh, we have browser integration, and we have a compiler to JavaScript. And best of all, this is all open source. So aside from paying me a million dollars, you could use it however you want. Uh, Dart runs on the client and the server, which is kind of exciting. And it targets the entire mobile web. So instead of just building an application that only runs on iOS or only runs on Android, even though Android's completely awesome, it's even better to build a HTML5 app and have it run everywhere. And it's for modern web apps. So I'm talking about like super rich client apps, you know, stuff like Gmail and the and you know Google Docs, where it's offline capable, 60, you know, animations running at 60 frames per second. Uh, built on the latest uh, JavaScript standard, which is ESF, uh, one of them, which is ES5+, plus, with all kinds of HTML5 goodies baked in. And in fact, I have a project where I ported a lot of the um, uh, HTML5 rocks samples to Dart, and that stuff works. Uh, you could learn Dart quickly. If you've ever tried to learn Haskell, I know that I have. It, it's hard. Dart's not Haskell. Uh, it's actually really, really easy to learn Dart. It's a class-based, single inheritance, object-oriented language. Has implicit interfaces, optional static typing, which we'll talk more about in a second. Real lexical scoping and closures. Who here likes closures? Okay, I always like to say closures are the type of thing that you'd like if you like that sort of thing. I like that sort of thing. Um, and it has a concurrency model based on message passing, which is kind of, it's kind of like Erlang or ZeroMQ. <coughs> And it has a super familiar syntax. We did that on purpose. We like tied our hands behind our back and we said, we promise to make this familiar to JavaScript and Java developers. Uh, so optional static typing, what does that mean? So it's a nice mix of static and dynamic typing. So it lets you prototype things quickly and use duct typing in a kind of JavaScripty way where you leave out all the types. But as you scale the size of your project, you want to have a project that's like a million lines long with 100 people developing on it, you could start working in type annotations into the code, kind of in the same way that we used to do with um, Clojure, uh, which is Java, uh, Google's JavaScript library. Um, 
so this lets you scale up with the size of the project and, um, and scale up with the size of the team. So I like to say Dart is a very scalable programming language in terms of number of lines of code and number of developers. And then best of all, once you add these static type annotations, you could catch a lot of the problems in your code with Dart Editor. And so you don't even have to run your test. You could catch it like right away. And I really like that. that. That leads to a very pleasant development experience. Okay, so here's some examples of Dart. Here's an example using variables, lists, and string interpolation. We have a main method. We're creating a list of fruits. We're not even using types here. We say for fruit and fruits, I like to eat fruit. So we have string interpolation, which is pretty nice. And notice if you've coded JavaScript, you'll notice that we don't have this has own property business. All of, a lot of those like gotchas that you might have in JavaScript or Java are just completely taken care of for you in, in Dart. They don't exist. Uh, here's what Dart looks like on the client side. So we import the Dart HTML uh, library. We have a main method. We're querying for a button by ID. So Dart is kind of its own jQuery. And then we have this nice DOM syntax. Who here loves the DOM API? Why does no one ever raise their hand with that? I don't get it. So Dart has its own HTML library that makes the DOM nice. Uh, so here we have button, on, click, add. And this is a callback that takes an event and it just says window.alert, hello world. Here's what Dart looks like on the server. So uh, we're importing Dart IO. We have a main method again. And this kind of looks like uh, node.js code. It was very, very much modeled after node.js. So we create a new HTTP server. We're listing on an interface with the port. Here's our default request handler, which is a callback. And when we get a, re a request, we do response.outputstream.write hello world. So very, very familiar. And we support WebSockets and all kinds of stuff like that too. Okay. So you could use the Dart editor to write code more quickly with autocomplete, jump to definition, perform simple refactorings, run Dart in Dartium, debug code, and compile Dart to JavaScript, all those kind of stuff. Um, the nice thing about Dart Editor is if you've coded a lot of JavaScript, it's actually fairly hard to make a super, super rich IDE with, with um, JavaScript. You can't do something that's as nice as IntelliJ. WebStorm is nice, but without all the static type annotations um, and without more language support, it's really hard to do an IDE that's you know very, very advanced. So Dart solves a lot of those problems. So here we are um, looking at Dart IDE. Um, and there's not much space because I made the font really, really big. Can you guys see the font all the way back there? Well, geez, I could make it smaller if we have multiple screens. Jeez. Okay, so here we have um, a project called Warriors. And we have a class called Ninja, a class called Pirate. They each have an attack method, and then we have a main method. So we create two warriors, and we say for warrior and warriors, warrior.attack. So I'm going to create some more stuff. I'm going to say var p equals new pirate. And I'm going to do p dot, and automatically it tells me all of the methods that I have. So I'm going to say attack. Now let's say that this is a massive code base, and I get confused about what I'm allowed to pass. So I'm going to pass a string with sword. Now I'm going to save that, and right away, it says um, it. I got too many projects open, so I'm getting warriors from multiple uh, things from multiple projects. But it says right here, um, there's an extra argument. Okay, so it tells me right away that that's wrong. So let me go ahead and change pirate to say that it does take um, a you know a weapon, but I'm going to get it wrong again, and say that it takes an int. Again, I get a warning that says string is not assignable to int. Well, I'll fix that too. And when I fix it, everything is fine. So we get lots and lots of nice help from the editor. Now let's see other things we could do. So let's say that uh, we have uh, attack and I want to click and find the definition of that. I just click on that and it goes to that. Well, that's, you know, that's kind of nice, but that's not all that impressive. Look at this show message method down here. I'm querying for something with an ID of text, and I'm saying div.text equals div.text message. And then I have this thing inside string interpolation, div.text. I don't even know what that is. But I could still click on that, 
and it goes to the definition of that in the DOM libraries. Can I get a round of applause for like the Dart editor guys? I mean, that amazes me. None of them are watching, so it was like useless, but okay. So I showed you static typing where I was passing the wrong type. Um, let's say that um, I'm going to undo a bunch of changes. And let's say that um, I'm going to do something really silly and say py var pirate equals one. So that's just a local variable. So now we have a class called pirate and a local variable called pirate. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to do uh, rename pirate of the seas. And it renames it here and here, but not here. It understands the code well enough so that rename and refactoring in general does the right thing. So that's pretty cool. So now let me show you uh, Dartium and debugging. So I have this code, and I'm going to go ahead and run it. So oops, it's running in Dart to JS. Run in Darty. OK, so here it is running in Chrome. And this is compiling to JavaScript. So it proves that this runs in all modern browsers. Because, well, I'm not going to try the other ones. But it does run in all modern browsers. And then uh, if I try um, running it in Dartium, this is a version of Chromium with the Dart VM integrated. Why is it going there? I think I might be. The demo gods might be getting me. But anyway, it, um, it runs in Dartium. So Dartium is a version of Chromium that understands Dart natively. So that's very exciting. OK, so let me move on before I get too far behind. Oops. OK. So I demoed that. Uh, we also, when we run inside Chrome, we um, output um, source maps. So even though Chrome doesn't understand Dart right now, uh, you could debug Dart natively uh, in Chrome thanks to source maps, and that's a really nice experience. OK, so web components. I'm only going to give two minutes on this. Web components let you create your own custom HTML tags. Finally, you could create custom tags. This is a very nice feature that we've wanted it for a long time. Uh, and now it's going to be um, working uh, directly in the browsers. Unfortunately, not all browsers support that yet. And so the, what we did in Dart is we have uh, a polyfill. And so we can um, compile stuff down so that it does run in today's browsers. Uh, this lets you also uh, give your tags custom logic that's written in Dart. And it uses uh, MDV model driven views uh, to keep your views and models in sync. So this is a lot like AngularJS, where you set you know, a variable inside your model, and that variable doesn't, is not special in any way. But the view will automatically update itself. So that's pretty nice. And um, the nice thing about this is it takes the pain out of building, um, pain out of building right client side applications. OK, so I was tired when I wrote that. Uh, so you could build modern web applications. This just makes it a lot nicer. OK, so there are two parts to this code lab. If you've never coded in Dart before, you want to take this part, bull, this code lab, which is Bullseye, your first Dart app. And here is the link. And then once you get done with that, uh, take this code lab, which is the one I put so much time into um, lately. And it's called Dart Web Components Code Lab. And this will walk you through taking um, the first code lab and making it you know, fully web components based. And you'll do the whole model driven view thing. So that's super excited. Um, and it's brand new. So like, you know, ask questions, post to uh, Stack Overflow or whatever you need to get through this. Um, I promise you, if you make it through this code lab, and it should not take you that long, uh, you will have a fairly strong understanding. OK, so Dart is structured web programming compatible with today's web. Please try it out and give us feedback. I'm going to leave the URLs there so that you could grab them. It's not working. OK, so let's. OK, get hub. OK. So if the second link doesn't work, then you want to come to github.com slash dart dash lang 
slash web dash components dash code lab that has both the source code and a PDF for the code lab. In fact, if you go there, the PDF has a link to the other code lab as well. And I don't seem to be able to get online, so I will leave that URL. The, the Wi-Fi saturated. It's what? The Wi-Fi is saturated. The Wi-Fi is saturated. Okay, so just jot down this link and that will give you the source code for the Web Components Code Lab. In there is the PDF and the PDF actually has a link to the other code lab as well inside it. So this one link is all you need. Sorry, my short link broke. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, great. So now in my remaining few minutes, I will take questions. Dart has its own implement. Uh, what do you use for server side for Dart HTTP? Dart has its own HTTP server written in Dart. And also, there's lots of fun things like Dart to JS is also written in Dart. And the web component stuff is all written in Dart. Um, I should point out one interesting thing. Um, Dart doesn't normally need to be compiled when you're running it in Dartium. To run it in um, Chrome, you have to compile it to JavaScript using Dart to JS. There's one bit where web components written in Dart, they have a compilation step too where it breaks up. You have Dart and HTML in the same file and it breaks it up into separate files. But you'll figure that out as you go through the code lab. More questions? Am I speaking too fast? I can never tell. Great. Okay, thank you very much.